we covered uh, let me just quickly go through so we uh, actually we just uh, started a brief introduction we looked at what are the various uh, flow features that we are encountering in uh, the subject we talked about uh, compressibility okay we talked about uh, what is a sound wave how it is uh, generated using different devices and then we basically talked about propagation of sound in a tube okay so in a tube or a channel how we account for uh, change in pressure and how we derive the speed of sound that is what we have uh, already discussed and we talked about uh, heat generation so let us uh, begin with heat generation so basically for any isentropic flow okay isentropic means reversible adiabatic so this will be a key word for a uh, large portion of your subject we'll talk about isentropic flows so for isentropic we know that p by pv gamma is constant or pv rho uh, p rho to the power gamma is constant this is a general uh, characteristics of a isentropic or adiabatic flow so uh, if i use that i can say that i can relate any p uh, p and p1 at a given uh, state and i can relate it to density in this way now for a perfect gas we'll uh, talk in more detail what what do we mean by perfect gas as of now you can uh, assume that we are talking about uh, something like an uh, ideal gas it is very similar to ideal gas concept so for an ideal gas or a perfect gas we say that pv is equal to rt or i can say that p uh, instead of v we can use p by rho is equal to rt so that rho goes to rhs we have p is equal to rho rt now if we substitute that i'll get some relation for temperature so basically i am using this equation and applying into this to get a relation for temperature so this is how uh, sorry so in this equation you can see that in a flow if we have a change in pressure or density then temperature is also changing okay and you can also calculate by knowing how much your pressure or density has changed you can calculate what is the change in temperature so if you know state 1 where you have uh, p1 rho1 and t1 if you know this you can calculate t for any given pressure or density okay so we will uh, look at various uh, examples and numericals then it might be more clear okay now uh, for isentropic flow isentropic is basically adiabatic reversible adiabatic so for isentropic flow we know that h plus v square by 2 is constant this is coming uh, from your first law for open systems okay so some uh, i i assume that you have uh, you have uh, read this so basically will uh, for this lecture and next lecture we'll talk a lot of basic equations from thermodynamics which is uh, assumed to be covered at a ug level i will quickly go through them a lot uh, give a detailed uh, derivation or presentation but if you have any doubt you can stop me and ask so this is coming from the first law of open systems when we say if it, if it is an isentropic we can say that h plus v square by 2 is constant and uh, we will also talk about uh, something called stagnation point so what what happens is that uh, let us say infinity uh, denotes your flow upstream flow or free stream flow so some fluid is uh, flowing uh, from the left of the image and it is coming and some portion of the fluid is going past that uh, what do you call air foil and again there is a stagnation point where the fluid is coming and hitting it and the velocity of that fluid becomes zero the fluid comes to a stop sudden stop adiabatically okay when when it is adiabatic then we'll talk about isentropic relation that is what we assume so this point is called stagnation point where the fluid stagnates or where it is brought to rest okay so if i use the same equation h uh, plus v square by 2 is constant so i can you uh, relate the properties of free stream and properties at stagnation point so at stagnation point uh, what will uh, v zero in this equation velocity uh, point velocity will be v zero will be zero yes so if i uh, if i remove this i can say that 
h infinity and i can take uh, as infinity this side so h not minus h infinity is equal to v not square by 2 okay so now for a perfect guess h is a function of temperature cpt so i can replace uh, that with that i can replace both then del t s cp into delta t and i can again say that delta t will be equal to t not minus t infinity is equal to v infinity square which is the velocity at the free stream divided by 2 cp okay now uh, one thing i wanted to mention here so because we have uh, bringing into uh, we are talking about suggestion point so if i have brought that fluid at rest adiabatically so these are called stagnation conditions so if that fluid is not losing any energy then this h not becomes the stagnation enthalpy and t not becomes the stagnation temperature that anyway we will uh, talk about it in, in detail in later slides but just to give you some uh, background now uh, we know that uh, r the gas constant is the difference of cp and cv and gamma is the ratio of cp and cv this i assume you all must know now using these two i can derive that r is equal to gamma minus 1 by gamma into cp this you can uh, try it yourself if you substitute gamma here you will get r in this like this we also know that uh, a square is equal to gamma rt this we have derived while talking about the speed of sound in a tube so if i combine these two equations what i can get is i can uh, i can eliminate r and i can get cp in terms of gamma uh, a and t okay and uh, let us say i took a particular case where i talk about the this uh, uh, speed of sound at the free stream and temperature at the free stream so this is what we get cp for the free stream cp will be equal to 1 by gamma minus 1 this coming from here and a and b is square by t and t so from the last slide we have this relation delta t is equal to this now if i uh, substitute cp from here i get delta t s this in terms of uh, mac number okay m infinity denotes the mac number at the free stream so basically we have uh, taken velocity from here and we have taken speed of sound from here if you, if you divide that you will get the mac number that's all this is a simple algebra that you can try and you will get this okay so uh, finally i can write this uh, stagnation temperature in this terms where t infinity is the free stream temperature okay so this is one important relation where we are talking about stagnation temperature in terms of mac number mac number and uh, uh, ratio of specific heat gamma so for uh, air at normal uh, Room temperature gamma is equal to one point four. So if I substitute one point four here, it becomes point four by two, which is equal to point two. So T T naught is equal to this much for air. And this is uh, uh, as I mentioned, T naught is called the total temperature or stagnation temperature at the stagnation point. Okay, so at the stagnation point, we defined different properties. stagnation enthalpy stagnation temperature so that will be stagnation pressure okay moving on now let us talk a bit about waves so let us say that i have uh, a point source or a speaker present here let me get uh, so we have a speaker at the center of this and these are the let us say every 1 second it generates some pressure pulse or sound so these are the three waves that are formed by using this in 3 second so which wave would have been formed first or which is the last red one is first red one is first so basically these waves are propagating outward so it is produced here and then it moves out so red one was formed first yellow one was formed last and this is stationary this is 
just sitting at that particular location this source is not moving with time so now we'll see some interesting uh, features that if suppose the source starts moving with time it is not sitting there it is also moving so let, first let us uh, look at the stationary case so let us uh, look at one practical example okay so this is what we just discussed so this uh, let us say this is at t is equal to uh, let us say some unit time it may not be second but some uh, time units where at minus 3 this was emitted minus 2 this was emitted minus 1 it means just last time step this was emitted this has reached to here now for this time step the wave will be generated now okay so for example if your frequency is let's say 1 hertz or one time step per second then it could be in seconds so this is t is equal to minus 3 second minus 2 second minus 1 second but that will depend on what is your frequency or what what exactly you are looking at so let us see uh, let us talk about water waves so let us see that we are let uh, dropping a drop or putting some disturbance at a regular frequency so these waves are generated at that frequency and what i wanted to highlight here is that the outermost ring was made first this is the disturbance that started from here and it was made first and the inner one was made the last right this this should be clear then you will get uh, then you will be able to appreciate what happens with the moving target moving source okay is this clear to everyone yes which wave generates first okay yeah. now let us look yes any doubt no oh, sir sorry your voice is not audible can you uh, speak a little louder no doubt sir okay fine fine okay moving on so let us uh, just look at the stationary wave what we saw in the last slide so these are the three waves which are produced at minus 3 second minus 3 t minus 2 minus 1 and source is always at that location so uh, in this plot we are talking about pressure fields produced at different times zero is the present time and we are talking about something in past that these three waves were produced in the past and yeah so on so forth and this is stationary so this is m is equal to zero velocity is zero so this is m is equal to zero now let us see when m is less than 1 m is more than 0 less than 1 so this is the source is moving so now you see what happens this minus 3 is the wave that is first produced when the so uh, source was here source is here okay then minus 2 is produced when the source moves the source is moving to the left okay so minus 2 is here so if you look carefully this minus 2 is the center of this circle similarly minus 1 is the center of this circle okay so every time the wave is produced it is moving outward in a circular form it is a circle but the center of the circle is shifting okay because the source is the center of the circle now let us say this becomes back number becomes equal to 1 what will happen then we'll see something like this so what what happens now is that you see 3 minus 3 is the center of this minus 2 is the center of uh, this circle and minus 1 is the center of this circle okay now minus 1 is means that let us say last time step the source was here now it produces some sound so how much time the sound will take to reach at some distance it will be velocity of sound a into whatever the time step is available right so the sound reaches up to here now the interesting thing is that the source is also moving at the speed of sound so it is traveling with sound so it also reached here so for all the circles if you see that this is where the sound is generated 3 seconds ago or 3 time steps ago now sound has reached here and the source also has reached here for time t uh, for the time zero or the present time the source is at this location is this uh, clear to everyone
Is this clear or any uh, doubts you have? Okay, so I assume uh, you have a Yes, sir. Okay. So now there are some uh, terms here that uh, maybe we'll talk about in the next slide. So basically, okay, let us go to the, this. So this is for Mac 1, where your speed of sound is equal to the speed of source. Now let us, uh, so we see something called Mac cone, zone of silence, and zone of action that I will define in the next slide. So let us say, uh, okay, now let us say that this is what happens when uh, the source moves at the speed of sound. Now let us say that the source is moving faster than sound. What will happen then? Let me show you a video. Okay, this is the question. What happens when the source is moving at the speed of higher than speed of sound? When Mach number is more than one, then it will look something like this. So you see different circles are the waves which are getting produced, but the source is moving faster than the wave because it has Mach 1.4. So the source is moving 1.4 times the speed of sound. And what is the shape that you are getting? If you focus on this part, and then what is the shape? Can you see something like a cone here? Yes, cone here. Yes. So something like a cone is getting formed. Okay, so this is called Mac cone. So we'll look at that in the next slide. Okay, so this is the Mac cone I was talking about. Okay, and these lines are called Mac waves or Mac lines. So these lines, what you see here, which contain that Mac cone, which form that Mac cone, this line is called Mac line. Okay, so this is again a similar figure where minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. These are the locations where the source is located at previous time steps. Now it is at 0. 0 should be here. Then uh, again, the circles are made in that fashion. I think it should be here by now. Now, uh, there are, these are the terms that will define. So, Mac cone is the cone formed by these circles. Basically, Mac cone contains. Macon separates two zones. One zone is zone of action, and another zone is zone of silence, which is on both the sides. So basically, what happens is that when your uh, object is moving, if let us say if it is a aeroplane, okay. So if the aeroplane is moving in the left side, okay. If uh, let us say this is a macon, right? So if any person is inside this mac cone. If it is here, he will hear the disturbance or he will feel, he will be able to measure the disturbance created by this aeroplane. While if you are outside mac, uh, this mac cone, if you are sitting here somewhere, then you will not feel it till that mac cone reaches to you. Okay. So these are called zone of silence and zone of action. So if you are outside the mac cone, you are in zone of silence. You don't hear. So basically, you are standing here, you can see that the plane is going past you, but you will not hear the sound. Okay, you see the plane has moved on first and then you hear the sound. That is what is happening here. So a person stand, uh, outside the Mac cone is in the zone of silence, who is inside the Mac cone, Mac zone, uh, Mac cone, it is the zone of action. Okay, so that is what is uh, shown here. Zone of silence and zone of action. Now let us uh, talk about this angle mu. So what? Uh, how do we find mu? Mu will be if you take the sine of that angle. It will be the at is the uh, speed of sound that is covering this. Uh, okay, let us say this at and vt is the velocity by which that is moving. The object is moving. Okay. So it becomes a by b, or I can say that sine of mu is 1 by m, or if you want to find that mu, we can take sine inverse of 1 by m. Is this clear how we found this angle? Yes. 
Yes, no. Say something. Yes. Okay, fine. So this we have already discussed. Now let us talk about uh, uh, back number flow regimes. So basically, as we have discussed, till uh, roughly about point three, we consider the flow to be incompressible. We neglect the compressivity effects. Okay, and uh, from point three to point two, it is still we say that it is subsonic. It is lower than the sonic, and compressivity effects are uh, have started to show up, but still. the full might will come after like one so from point 3 to point 8 is subsonic flow then uh, the region surrounding mag 1 from point 8 to 1.2 we call that transonic flow okay it is basically surrounding the transition zone where you are less than mag 1 or more than one that makes a lot of difference as we'll see in uh, uh, future slides that whether you are subsonic or supersonic now after 1.2 we see that the flow is supersonic okay after mac 5 we talk about hypersonic flow which mostly will not discuss this flow in this course we will be mostly limited to supersonic and transonic regimes and uh, last one is about uh, mac number of 11 and 12 after that you get hyper velocity flow okay so the source is moving at a much a much higher speed than sound so i want to see how it looks so if you are traveling at hypersonic speeds so your sound waves will be made here and you are already miles ahead so there, this is also forming a cone but it is a very different type of cone okay so this is for back 5 okay moving on now let us uh, talk about mac wave so basically if you have a object which is thus i am basically you are talking about this angle if this angle is very small okay so in your book they have mentioned in infinitesimal or in fact infinitely small then the disturbance that it produced will also be very small and that disturbance which is produced by a very small angle that can be considered to be similar to or identical to sound waves what we are basically talking so these are called mac waves sound waves or mac waves and the uh, the statement will not deviate much because anyway this is a very this is shown in a very exaggerated manner actually it has to be very 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 small so the statement will not deviate much it looks quite deviated in this figure but uh, that is not the idea if i make infinitely then you cannot see this image will mostly go straight okay now and the pressure increase will also be very small infinitesimally small okay across the mac cone so this is for mac wave which is for very small disturbance now let us say if i have finite disturbance if theta is finite finite means it is it may be small but it is appreciable it is not infinitely small so if uh, uh, sorry delta delta is finite then the disturbance that it induces they are also finite it cannot be infinitely small but we saw in the last slide so then at that case we say it uh, uh, term this as shock wave we say that this is forming a shock and this angle beta is always smaller than the mac angle that is anyway fine and uh, derivation of streamline is finite so streamline will deviate through a finite angle it will not be almost same it will be appreciable derivation that again we will derive this relations when we study normal and oblique shock we'll talk about how much the angle is varying and what are the factors involved this is uh, just to like we'll uh, give a brief overview then we'll go to the actual mathematical derivations okay now the pressure increases across the shock wave is also finite fine so these are the two cases mac wave and shock wave so with that uh, let me start uh, stop uh, with the introductory these are the reference book that you can refer to let me stop recording